Welcome back to the wizard shop guys. You guys have been mentioning in the comment section, what about that awesome looking silverish colored gray Ferrari in the background? What's going on with that? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a video on this really beautiful Ferrari. Let's get started. This is a 2001 Ferrari 360 Modena, or Modena. Some people say it a little differently. I call it a Modena. And some of you have been wondering, why is it here? We're going to go over today what's wrong with the car, the complaints of the car, and check it out. The customer brought it here because he has a check engine light on. He's concerned about some misfires, maybe an airflow sensor or something going wrong. We did discover what's wrong with the car. We found a few other things that are additionally wrong to the complaint, things that weren't even complained about, which is really good. On these cars, you want to find things before disaster happens. So let's take a look in the engine bay and get started. So here we are at the back of the car, with the beautiful, beautiful engine. It's not as beautiful as it could be because we have these panels off that are inside that cover all these hoses and wires and things. So we were doing some diagnosis. It did have a vacuum leak that we got fixed. It was a split hose. But as we were discovering what's wrong with this car, we were finding other things that needed to be addressed. Many friends and family or other people have asked me when they hear that I work on Ferraris and Lamborghinis. They're like, oh wow, I bet those are so hard to work on. And they talk as if what's going on inside the engine bay back here is alien technology. From the show that's on TV, we all have seen a few times ancient aliens. This is a hugely alien technology that came from the Mesopotamian era no, it is not alien technology. It is not extravagantly hard to work on. It has mass airflow sensors. It has oxygen sensors, NOx sensors, fuel pumps, fuel injectors, all the same things that you would find in a Kia Rondo or any other car on the, that's gas powered on the face of this planet. When Ferrari or Lamborghini makes a car, they don't design their own airflow sensors. They don't design their own fuel system. They don't start from scratch. They go to Bosch. They go to Delphi. They go to all these major manufacturers of these parts and say, we need an airflow sensor. We need this. We need that. And they take off the shelf things. They may modify it a little bit here or there. But for the most part, it's standard fuel injection system. It's not hard. So like on... Hoovy's orange Murcielago. There's lots of Audi parts on there. And some of the modern Ferraris, and even the blue 360 that we've had in here, it had some switches on the dash that were bad. We was able to source those on a Fiat. It was a Fiat. I don't even know what car it was. The customer actually found them for me. But they're Fiat switches, and we changed them out, and it works beautifully. So there's a lot of parts that can swap back and forth. Some of them have been modified or changed specifically for this car. But like I said, it's not alien technology. It's not hard to work on. You just have to be more careful. Take more time. Don't hurt things. Don't scratch things. You have to be careful with them. One of the check engine light codes was stating that there was a few misfires going on in this engine. I think one and three and seven or something along, that, along those lines. We did do a vacuum test or a smoke test to check for any vacuum leaks. We did find a couple of split hoses and we got those repaired. And it did make it a lot better, but it still had a slight misfire. When diagnosing these, you can do a lot of the same testing that you do on any other car. The customer stated he had a concern about the airflow sensors being dirty. And sure enough, I did the old trick. So you just unplug the sensors. There's two of them, left and right. And start the engine back up. And when I did that, it idles perfect. The small misfire that it had is gone. The misfire codes are gone. It had some issues, also some codes running lean and whatnot. And everything points to airflow sensors. We've got those on order, but I didn't have to do any drastic testing or use any alien technology to find out what was wrong. All I did was unplug the airflow sensors and I had immediate improvement. So I know they're not doing their job. What, th what happens when you do that is that the computer switches over to pre-programmed parameters which will allow it to run at least normal, somewhat normal, 
And when that happens and you can notice it runs so much better now, if you could just give it the right data, it would run right again. These are not giving good data. They're bad. We did try to clean them and that did no good. They're still bad. So that's what's wrong with his check engine light. But I mentioned there's some other things that we found that are an issue. One of them is the cap to the fuel pump assembly is starting to leak fuel. Let's take a look. So right now you can see in the middle there's this little cross shaped piece that's in the center of it. It's actually very clean like brand new plastic there and that's because as you drive it and as you're going along those four little chambers will fill with fuel slowly. That's a common issue with the Ferrari 360 is these go bad and this one is starting to go bad. So we've got a new fuel pump assembly ordered. We're going to be replacing that because we're not going to wait until it starts spraying fuel to take care of it. These are not the kind of cars that you kind of just say, oh, well, maybe it will get better or maybe, it, no, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. We know from Tyler's Ferrari 355, there were metal fuel lines that went underneath some plastic that are covered and there was a recall for those. You would think, oh, well, that should be addressed. That the, the original owner would have taken that to the dealer, and there was a massive recall on those. Obviously, he would have gotten that taken care of. No, they didn't. On Tyler's Ferrari 355, it wasn't done. It wasn't caught because those panels were never removed. We never took that stuff apart. And it sprayed, it finally burst, and that's what burned down his Ferrari. The customer wanted us to also do a check over of the whole vehicle while it's in here, and I'm glad we did because we found that and we're definitely going to address that with this with this car. When the engine was running we also heard a rattling noise like a metallic like a belt or a pulley or something going on. So I'll raise it up and we'll take a look from the bottom and you can see one of the pulleys is starting to go bad, a metal pulley. Let's take a look. While we work our way back to that noise I was talking about, let's go ahead and do a quick check of the vehicle. And the brakes are nice and thick. Nothing loose there. Everything's nice and tight. Brakes are nice and thick. Nice and tight there. Looks good. There's not a whole lot to see under, underneath of one of these cars with all the panels. We do have some panels off when we were getting to the, uh, the noise. You can see that the coolant pipes run up through the center of the car. Power steering pipes, all those different things runs up to the front. There's no leaks there or anything going on. We'll check the rear real quick and then we'll come back to our noise. Parking brake is good. The rear brakes is good. Nothing loose there. These cars are really built pretty interesting. I like working on them. They actually come apart really easy. You would think it'd be hard, but they're not. Nothing loose there. Nothing loose there. CV shafts look good. No leaks. CV boots are good. I don't see any leaks anywhere other than that fuel issue we talked about. So let's go ahead and take a look at our pulleys. We kept hearing it while it was running like a tch -tch 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 noise. And you can see this metal pulley here. This one's actually good, but this is what it looks like. But it's up higher. You can see that small pulley way up in there. You can hear that. That thing was just sitting there rattling away. If it were to have failed, it wouldn't have been a huge deal. Those just catch the slack on the belt as it's bouncing around to keep it from flopping. They really don't hold a whole lot. But we definitely need to get that addressed. So we've got a new one of those ordered as well. Let's go ahead and lower the car down. You can definitely tell that Ferrari is proud of their engines because they put this glass here so that anybody who walks by, they can see, look how beautiful this engine is. And it really is. It's a work of art, the way they've designed it, the intake plenums, they're red. 
the way that everything's laid out, it just really looks awesome. This car has Novatec exhaust on it, and if we weren't halfway through diagnosis and repair on this, I would start it up and let you hear it. But once we get this done, maybe we'll do a final video on it, and you guys can hear this thing sounds absolutely amazing. It's beautiful, the exhaust tone. Most of these Ferraris are the flat plane V8, the sound that they put out. I think, to me, my personal opinion is the best sounding engine on the planet. It just sounds guttural and it sounds amazing. So, let's take a look at the interior. There's been a lot of upgrades in this interior. It's got carbon fiber bezels and center console and all kinds of different parts, instrument cluster. It looks really, really good on this car, especially with the color of the interior. I love the carbon fiber decor on here that he's done. It looks really, really nice. Shifter paddles are also carbon fiber. This car is in very good shape. It's got about 38,000 miles on it. The guy's taking care of it. It's been a, been a good car for him. He's had some issues here or there along the way, but he's gotten taken care of. And he drive, he drives this car a lot. Some people park their cars, their Ferraris and Lambos, and park them in their garage for months on end. This guy drives it quite frequently. And that's what I would do too if I had one of these. I'd be, I'd be driving it a lot. I love the seats on these 360s. The several that I've driven, it's just so, so nice. Compared to a Lamborghini, which is heavily, heavily bolstered, these do have the bolster that you need to keep you in your seat, but it's still comfortable. So I'm glad you guys could follow along and check out this beautiful Ferrari 360 before it's out of the shop. The parts are ordered, and as soon as they come in, we'll get this thing fixed up and get it back on the road for him so he can continue to drive it. We still got some fall driving season left here in Kansas, and he definitely wants to get out and enjoy some of that before it's over. So we'll get this taken care of and get it out of the shop, and the guy will have those worries behind him. Any the tools that we use to fix these cars, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All my tools are listed there. We get a small cut, and I thank you guys. You've already bought a lot of stuff, and really appreciate it. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that now. We've got a lot of cool content to come. Thanks for watching.